I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about how to avoid being gaslit. Ooh. We're gonna talk all about gaslighting in this video and also some ways to manage it because it is a difficult situation when someone is testing you in this way. Yeah, gaslighting happens a lot more than you think or at least a lot more than you're told to think. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so we're gonna be talking about this today because you may be in a situation where somebody's been gaslighting you and making you feel like things that are happening aren't happening and twisting around reality. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So gaslighting is basically where someone makes you question your sanity, makes you question if events happened or not, and basically question your word. And so this can be something that's really difficult to argue with because it is your perspective versus theirs. And a lot of times with gaslighting, people will be very demeaning. They will say that your perspective isn't valid or that you are lying to them. They can distort reality and distort uh, what has actually happened. Mm -hmm. Some people do this intentionally as a emotional manipulation, as a way to control the situation and can be considered emotional abuse. To play devil's advocate a little bit here, I do want to say sometimes two different people will have two different interpretations of an event. Okay, so sure. I saw this. No, well, that I didn't see it that way. It, I don't think that happened. That can happen naturally in couples. It starts to get more into gaslighting when it really becomes demeaning. You don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. Uh, when it starts to, to get more personal in that way. Yep. Yeah, and when that happens, a lot of times they're making you seem like you're blowing things out of proportion. Mm -hmm. By the way, I've got a cold if you haven't been able to hear it. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> exactly. He's crazy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I, I apologize. <laughs> I, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> you're right. I don't. So this is a pattern that can happen in toxic relationships. Sometimes you will see people with personality disorders use this tax tactic intentionally. It can be used to distract from the truth. Mm -hmm. So if a partner has been mistreating you or has been cheating on you behind your back, lying to you, deceiving you, they may use gaslighting as a way for you to stay, basically, as a way for them to control the narrative. I've seen a lot of dismissive avoidance use it a lot more than anyone. Um, and dismissive avoidance tend to be closer to narcissistic traits and stuff like that. Mm. But in my experience, you'll see it more with people because in a way they've gaslit themselves. Mm -hmm. that, like a lot of times people will say, oh, I had a great childhood when it was filled with abuse and violence and the police were coming to their house all the time and you ask them how their life was, oh, it was great. So they're gaslighting themselves in a way. And in some ways, they got it from their own parents mm -hmm. to gaslight them. Oh, you're fine. You don't get upset about, you're getting upset about nothing. Yeah. So they're used to having to distort reality to survive it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you bring up a really great point that sometimes parents can gaslight too. You know, oh, you were only three. You don't really know what was going on. You don't remember that. You're mm. making it up. You're fabricating it. And so when we do see these toxic behaviors and patterns in parents and our role models, we can get used to this way of communicating and talking with people, dealing with situations by, you know, pretending it never happened, questioning your partner's sanity. So what do we do to handle it when we're in this situation? When we notice that our partner or our friend or our parent is trying to gaslight us, where we notice, okay, 
they are really making me question what's real here and what's going on and I'm very confused. Okay, there's a couple things that we can do to take our power back in this scenario. And the first one is thinking about what evidence is there. With certain things, some people do have shaky memories. In moments that are highly emotional, in moments that are traumatic, you know, our memory of that event can be affected. We mm -hmm. might not remember things clearly because we are so involved with our emotions. So if there is anything that can prove or disprove, if there's any form of evidence that you can show, okay, well, you know, here are the text messages, here are the screenshots. Mm. Here's, you know, a, another person who can testify. Mm -hmm. Here's some other supporting evidence of, you know, my stance and this is how I see it. That can be something that nips the conversation in the bud. And ideally, if you have a partner who is empathetic, who is willing to work with you, they will see those things and say, oh, I must have seen this in a different way or in a wrong way. I'm sorry, and I can recognize that this evidence is valid. Yeah. If you have a partner that's really toxic, they can even challenge the evidence. You made that up. You are collaborating with this person to manufacture this huge lie. So if there is pieces of evidence, you can choose to put that on the table, but also know that a person might be willing to work with you, they might not be. Or they they won't want to see the evidence. <laughs> yeah. You'll be like, well, I have proof. No, I don't I don't need to see it. Mm. I don't want to see it. There's mm. no point. Yeah. yeah. And they and now they now they make it look like the thing that they were making a big deal about isn't even important mm -hmm. because you have evidence and facts yeah. that destroy their argument. Right. Or they'll take it even further. You're so crazy for digging that up. Yeah. Why did you go through my stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Or, yeah, why did you go through the point of doing that? Or why did you get everybody involved? Yeah. Now, now you make me look like the bad guy. You really need help. So there's levels to this. Okay, guys, remember that a lot of things are a spectrum and people's use of these toxic behaviors can also be a spectrum. Yep. So keep that in mind. And if it's happening, you feel drawn in and you like you have to stay in the argument, but you don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't have to engage. Sometimes it's better just to take a step back, say, okay, you know what? We're both upset right now. There's no reason to talk about it. Not everything has to happen in that time frame or in that moment. You can come back and deal with it later. Right. And I know the instinct is to defend ourselves. When someone challenges us, we want to say, well, no, I'm not crazy. I, I know what I saw. And sometimes that can get you caught into that pattern is that we want to protect ourselves. We want to stand up for ourselves, but you have to have that discernment to understand when it's worth it and times where it's better, when it's better to save your resources for a later time or to not have that conversation at all with that person if it's not going to be productive or if it's going to be more harmful for your mental health. Yeah, so these are all things that you want to consider. Yep. Another thing that can be helpful is accepting that your perception of something is going to be different than your partner's sometimes. Earlier, I had played devil's advocate a little bit in saying that sometimes there are scenarios where genuinely your partner believes that, that something happened the way they saw it. They are experiencing their own emotions towards that. The key here is the ability to have empathy and respect towards one another. Like I had said before with gaslighting, there can be an undertone of belittling, of demeaning your partner. And sometimes when you confront them, they say, I was just joking. Mm -hmm. That was just a joke. Mm -hmm. When you know they were not joking. Right, right. So these traits that you want to look for that are healthier, somebody who says, you know what, I'm, I'm willing to accept that my position might be wrong, but I see that you're really hurt here. What can I do to, to make you feel better? How can we repair this? That's really what you want to look for in a healthier partner versus a partner that's probably going to continue that pattern of gaslighting, double down, you know, and, and really defend their ego there and it, try to distort your reality. It's almost like gaslighting is the exact opposite of empathy. Mm -hmm. It's literally like the exact opposite. Yeah. Because when you're empathetic, you're, you're really validating somebody on how they feel and, and, and saying how true it is and, oh, wow, I can really see how you were feeling. Whereas the gaslighting is the exact opposite, refusing to see your position and telling you that you're wrong about it. Mm -hmm. So it's like the, the opposite. Right. Right. And I feel like the more secure somebody is, the more empathetic they are. Mm -hmm. And that's and there's a big part in the course, the creative healing course, 
on empathy because especially I think it's in section 10 I when where so. it's more about mm-hmm. the secure stuff that really helps you to see how to be empathetic because when you're empathetic it really allows somebody to feel like they can be themselves with you without being judged and you're being understanding and you care about how they feel. Right. And secure attachment is about having a balanced view with certain things, you know, being able to accept responsibility for wrongdoings. So keep an ear out for that. Even when you're dating someone new, hearing how they talk about other people, about their past partners, are they able to say, okay, well, yes, there were some things that I have done wrong here too. There were some mistakes that I made there too, or able to see other people's point of view. So hopefully this helps. I know we we covered quite a bit Mm -hmm. on gaslighting and I know it covers many different situations. I think we covered all of it. You think we didn't miss any single points. I don't know why I'm challenging that. (laughs) Okay, we have a couple more things to say uh, for you to consider. Does your partner respect you? Respect and love go hand in hand. Consider, does your partner show you empathy? Do they care about how you feel? and how their behavior impacts you. You have a right to how you feel and how you see things. And a partner who really cares about you is gonna care about how you feel and how they feel, and you both try and understand each other and work from there. Exactly, right. And also in saying that you have a right to your story is that if your partner is unwilling to see your side of things or work with you on things, then you have the right to take the information from what you know, your evidence, and make a decision from that. You know, if you have a partner that's continu- continuously um, denying, making you question your sanity, uh, just deflecting, dismissing, these are all things that you have to consider for yourself as far as, is this making a healthy relationship? Do I feel safe? Do I trust this person? Am I able to still be in tune with my body? Sometimes when we're dating a gaslighter for a very long period of time, like you had said earlier, we start to question ourselves and we can internalize that gaslighting and gaslight ourselves when we should be standing up for ourselves. So it's all about discernment, but you know, keeping an eye out, using these bits of information to help make informed decisions. Absolutely. All right, so hopefully you found this one helpful. And of course, if you wanna get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name at the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.